Hey guys, it's Tom with Watchman River. Thanks for joining me today. We have another great day that the Lord has made and we will rejoice and be glad in it. I hope you guys had a blessed weekend. I sure had a great weekend. What a celebration at our church yesterday. We celebrated Jesus resurrecting. And you know what? Man, I celebrate Jesus' resurrection every day of the year. But yesterday was a, a special and great day. And uh, I ate too much food, way too much. My wife made this brisket that was just, whew, it was good. Gravy, mashed potatoes, all kinds of stuff. Green bean casserole. We celebrated Jesus yesterday. So last year was the year of the the weather balloons and and the strange and devastating fires and and uh, and food plant food processing plant. I would say sabotage because it wasn't the normal amount. It was like 10 times the amount of problems. And, you know, we see all these troubles going on in the world. Well, this year we've got the, the, the eclipses uh, and the cicadas and we have bridges being crashed into. It seems like every, every year it intensifies these crazy things we see going on in the world. But anyway, so it's April 1st. And I want to talk about this month, which seems to have a lot of things going on. Is this going to be a very unusual April? Is this going to be a crazy April? Or is it just going to be another month as we await the rapture of the church, the pre-tribulation rapture by Jesus? First, I want to go on record saying, I have to go on record saying this. I said it once before. I don't think the rapture is going to happen on April 8th the day of the great American eclipse. Okay, there I said it. Now, does it mean the rapture can't happen that day? Well, no, I look up every day. It could happen any day, but I'm not giving April 8th any more significance than any other day. I just wanted that for the record. And many people are putting their hopes in that day. And there's a lot of people saying it's that day, it's that day. And, and uh, if you put your hope in April 8th, you know what might happen? April 9th. And you know what that leads to? Discouragement. Put your hope in Jesus because his timing is perfect. And if you put your hope in April 8th, that discouragement mindset may set in. And that mindset, that poison mindset of why is he taking so long? I thought it was April 8th. Do you see where I'm going? You know, don't do that. I like to use my rain analogy. I've used this before. Do you know when it's really, really dark, the clouds are really dark and you hear a rumbling in the distance and the air is very humid and you're like, we are about to get hammered with a thunderstorm and rain and lightning. You just know it's coming and the rumbling gets louder each time. Well, what if during that time period you were outside and you're like, it's going to happen in six minutes. It's going to happen in six minutes and you got your timer and the rumbling's getting louder and louder and that you can feel that moisture in the air and the clouds are black. And then that minute comes and goes that you were planning on it would happen then. And you're like, it didn't happen. But the clouds are darker than ever. The thunders, the rumbling is getting louder. It's, it's like, it's gonna happen. You know, don't put your hope in a date, please. Please, we are so into the end time. We're so in the last days. You don't have to put your faith in a date, okay? He's coming. He's coming soon. The world's getting darker and darker every day. Okay. I found a very interesting article. Maybe if I remember, I will put the link in the description below. And it's called Eight extremely unusual events that will happen during the month of April. Just kind of put them all together. So I'm going to just read the, the eight, the eight extremely unusual events that are happening in, in April. And we'll talk a little bit about them here and there. So number one, as we enter the month of April, the devil comment, you guys know about the devil comment, right? The devil comment has become visible to the naked eye in the Northern hemisphere. Comet 12P Pons Brooks, also known as the Devil Comet, and the Mother of Dragons Comet, very interesting, is currently visible in the night skies of the Northern Hemisphere. This Haley-type comet 
which orbits the sun every 71 years and has a nucleus of about 30 kilometers in diameter, is known for its impressive outburst of gas and dust during its voyages through the inner solar system. So yeah, the devil comet is out and about. What does that mean? I don't know. I don't know. But now we go to number two on his list. On April 4th, there will be an extraordinary alignment of four planets just four days before the Great American Eclipse of 2024. It will feature four planets, Venus, Neptune, Saturn, and Mars. The planets will align in the morning sky. Venus, Saturn, and Mars will be visible to the naked eye, but you'll need a telescope or a high-powered binoculars to see Neptune. Then number three, April 8th. Um, the seven other planets, this is the same day as the solar eclipse, but the seven other planets in our solar system, along with the sun and the moon, will appear in a straight line in the sky when looking from Jerusalem toward the east. Just interesting. A lot of stuff going on in April. What does it mean? I don't know. I don't know. Number four, also on April 8th, CERN is planning to fire up the Large Hadron Collider. The world's largest and most powerful particle accelerator is set to smash protons together on April 8th to search for invisible particles secretly powering our universe. So you got this underground thing, you know, smashing them protons together. What does it mean? I don't know. Some people say when the planets align, that can cause earthquakes. So you got this Great American Eclipse, and some people say these kind of eclipses can cause earthquakes. You've got the Great American Eclipse on April 8th. You've got the line lineup of the planets. You've got CERN smashing protons. Uh, fo um, protons. You've got, oh, this is the next one, number five. The most anticipated event of April is the Great American Eclipse of 2024. USA Today is calling it the astronomical event of the decade. Then number six, you've got, as the eclipse passes over America on April 8th, NASA will be firing three rockets into the moon's shadow. NASA has announced it will fire three scientific-sounding rockets into the moon's shadow on Monday, April 8th, during a partial solar eclipse across North America. <laughs> Sorry I'm laughing about this. You know, this is what I think, all right? Because I can't line this stuff up with scripture. Some people say they can't. I don't see it. I think the Great American Eclipse is a sign to America. I really do, because seven years before made the first part of an X, and then seven years later, it makes a perfect X over the United States. And we all know judgment is coming to this country. We all know it. So I do think that is a sign. The rest of this stuff, I just find it so interesting. And what I like about all this is we're in the month now. So we're going to see if anything happens. You know, I pray that we don't have major earthquakes in America on that day. I really do. I mean, I pray it's a peaceful eclipse that people can see, but I do believe judgment is coming to America. <clears throat> also, number seven, ominously, on April 8th, the great American eclipse of 2024 will complete the giant X over the new Madrid fault zone that the great American eclipse in 2007, 17 began. So yeah, it's over a fault zone. So it's just It looks like the perfect setup for bad stuff. But, you know, we're going to see what happens. Uh, number eight, dur this one's just, I find this one a little bit humorous. You know, I, you know, during the month of April, the cicada apocalypse, you know, the cicadas, cicadas, you say cicada, I say cicada. I think it's cicadas. The cicada apocalypse is coming. Um, for the first time since Thomas Jefferson was president, billions of, of 13-year cicadas and billions of 17-year cicadas will emerge from the ground simultaneously. Billions and even trillions of cicadas are going to emerge at the same time across 17 states. A professor in Yukon's Department of uh, Ecology and Evolutionary Biology told Live Science. Uh, brood 13 and 14 have been living underground for 17 and 13 years respectively, and they will soon emerge at the same time for the first time in 221 years. What does it all mean? What does all these eight points mean? I don't know. <laughs> do you like that I keep saying that? I don't know. But I do, like I said, I do think it's a warning to America. And maybe this is the final warning. You know, maybe one happened seven years ago. 
And now this one happens, and I don't know if it's that day or it's a countdown, but, um, you know, I really, I, I think we're really close to the rapture of the church. I really do. Um, I, and I know one thing that I always say this, because this is the most important thing I've said so far. Jesus is not rattled by any of this. He's not worried by any of this stuff that's going on. And how many times did he tell us not to worry? So I choose to look at this and not worry. You know, I choose to look at it and just say, you know what? I love Jesus. I belong to him. He's my rest. He's my hope. And I'm just going to rest in him, trust him, and I'm not going to worry. There you go. There you go. All right. So what else? Let's see what else we got going on here. Hmm. Oh, I got some scriptures I want to share. Let's go to Philippians 4, 6 and 7. Be anxious for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God and the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. I like to share these do not worry, fear not kind of verses on days like this where we talk about stuff that looks like it could be crazy or nothing. We'll see. Let's go to Isaiah 41, verse 10. Fear not, for I am with you. Be not dismayed, for I am your God. I will strengthen you. Yes, I will help you. I will uphold you with my righteous right hand. Isn't that the God you want to belong to? That's the one I want to belong to. First Peter chapter 5, verse 7. Casting all your care upon him, for he cares for you. Praise Jesus. Let's go to Matthew 6. Verse 34, therefore, do not worry about tomorrow, for tomorrow will worry about its own thing. Sufficient for the day is its own trouble. You know what? Say to Jesus, I'm living for today, and I trust you for today. I'm not going to think about tomorrow until it becomes today. You know, I, I always think, like, you step out of time. Like, just, we're, we're promised an, enough strength for the day. As the day, so shall thy strength be. And just trust in Jesus today. You know, and then when tomorrow becomes today, then you trust in him again for today. All right. How about we go to Psalm 94, verse 19. In the multitude of my anxieties within me, your comforts delight my soul. I love that. John 14, 1. Let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. One more. John 14, 27 peace I leave with you, my peace I give to you, not as the world gives do I give to you. Let not your heart be troubled, neither let it be afraid. That's right from the mouth of Jesus. So I am going to choose to trust him and not worry. Because I don't know what this month is going to bring. We're there, it's April 1st. But I don't know what it's going to bring. You know, I, I pray, my prayer is always peace. My prayer is always, I don't pray for catastrophic events to hit the world so we can be raptured quicker. I just don't, you know, but at the same time, all the events, everything is converged. We're waiting for the rapture. The world is getting darker and darker, but I just put my trust in the Lord. All right, let's see what's going on in the news. Poland's leader puts European countries on notice. Don't want to scare anyone, but prepare for war. Polish Prime Minister Donald Tusk urged European nations to step up investment in their defense saying the continent isn't ready for the current pre-war era. Tusk made the remarks during a recent interview with various European newspapers. He said, I don't want to scare anyone, but war is no longer a concept from the past, he said before referring to Russia's invasion of Ukraine. It's real, and it started over two years ago. Russia has intensified airstrikes against its neighbor, Recently, Russian missiles briefly breached Polish airspace during an attack on Ukraine, and that prompted Warsaw to put its forces on heightened readiness. Moscow has escalated its attacks in recent days, launching several missile barrages on the capital, Kiev, and hitting energy infrastructure across the country in apparent retaliation for the recent Ukrainian aerial attacks on the Russian border region of Belgorod. So that's what he's saying there. You know what? Some people say that, I read this historian who said the other day that this is way worse, what we're in right now, than the build-up to World War II. You know, the, just the way the whole world is geopolitically. It's like, yeah, but you know what? 
Jesus is coming soon. I don't see World War III happening before Jesus comes, honestly, to rapture the church. Now we go to Israel radar. Israel builds massive emergency supply of fuel, food, and medical gear to prep for war versus Hezbollah. Over $500 million invested in boosting stockpiles. In parallel, electricity grid fortified to minimize rocket damage, daily blackouts expected, Israel to halt gas rig operations, and switch to alternative sources of energy during the war. They're really preparing for this war with Hezbollah. Hezbollah expected to fire up to 5,000 missiles and rockets daily. Officials say war will erupt unexpectedly regardless of who initiates it. Most rockets to target Haifa area and northern Israel. They're preparing. They're preparing for that front to fully open now. You know, they're almost done with the Gaza Strip. And at some point, it's going to open. Will God step in before that happens? It's possible. I really think we're in the very last days. That's why I tell you I'm looking up every single day. Um, this is from Israel Channel 12. They said, today Israel is in the worst situation globally since its inception. The world hates us. Support for us is at an all-time low. And anti-Semitism is at a new high. You know what I say to that? But God. But God. God's hand is on that nation. This is from the Times of Israel. Can't go on like this. Tens of thousands start a four-day anti-government protest outside the Knesset. Yep, they started protesting again, their own people in Israel. Thousands of demonstrators packed streets outside of the Knesset in Jerusalem on Sunday evening in a mass protest demanding the government resign, marking the first day in what is slated to be a four-day event. There was a lot of violence. There was a lot of stuff going on last night. The organizers of the protest called for Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu and his government to step down, for Israel to hold early elections, and for the country's leaders to agree to a hostage deal uh, that will bring about the release of 130 captives held in Gaza since Hamas' devastating October 7th attack on the country. The gathering outside the Knesset was spearheaded by a coalition of anti-government protest movements, including the Kaplan Force and Brothers in Arms, who plan to hold four days of protest and gatherings in Jerusalem this week. Can you imagine in the middle of a war when you've got 250,000 rockets pointed at you, you're going to start <laughs> protesting your government. It's just, uh, you know, that, not too smart. Not too smart. Israel from last night, um, Israel protesters said, we will burn Netanyahu's house. This happened the last round of these riots. And again, they said a number of protesters and opponents of Netanyahu went to his house in Jerusalem after the protest rally and said they planned to set fire to his house. Okay. This is from Israel Today. And it said, again, Israel is quickly returning to the violent internal divisions that characterized the months prior to October 7th. Anti-government protesters on Saturday broke through a police barricade threatening to to burn Prime Minister's house. This is from this morning from the Israel Defense Forces. A short while ago, IDF fighter jets simultaneously struck approximately 10 Hezbollah uh, terror targets, including a weapons storage facility, launch post, and terror infrastructure in southern Lebanon. So that tit for tat keeps going on and going on, but I think it's getting closer to something major, either the rapture or we may see that front open. But I, I tend to think the rapture before that front opens. But but it is possible we could be here to see that front open, Lebanon and, and uh, Israel fighting Hezbollah, like the full front opening, which would be very ugly. Uh, this is from the Times of Israel. Finally, the IDF says it is withdrawn from Gaza City's Shifa Hospital, ending the operation. The IDF confirmed it has wrapped up its operation against Hamas at Shifa Hospital overnight with all the troops leaving the area. During the raid, which began on March 18th, I can't believe how fast time is going, March 18th, the IDF said troops captured some 900 suspects, of whom more than 500 were confirmed to be terror operatives, and killed more than 200 gunmen. So you're talking about, you know, 700 terror operatives in a hospital. Something wrong there. 
Among those killed and detained were top commanders at Hamas and Palestinian Islamic Jihad. Meanwhile, in central Gaza, the IDF says an attack helicopter carried out a strike on a building used by Hamas and another building that was booby-trapped and had been used by Hamas operatives to observe troops. So it keeps going on and on and on. Yesterday, it was announced that Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu had to have emergency surgery. He had a really bad hernia, and he had that last night, and he's fine. What else? A group of Hamas supporters disrupts the Easter observance at St. Patrick's Cathedral in New York City. I saw the video. They just walked right up to the front during a service and held up their flags and did their thing. Uh, also yesterday, an individual sets a trailer full of Bibles on fire in front of a Tennessee church. A sinister individual, they don't know who it is yet, a sinister individual committed a heinous and criminal act in the Mount Juliet, Tennessee on Easter Sunday. Wilson County deputies responded to a trailer fire at an old Lebanon dirt road in Chandler Road around 6 a.m. Mount Juliet Fire Department crews contained and extinguished the fire, but not before all the Bibles on the trailer had burned. So that was their, their protest, I guess. Doesn't rattle Jesus, so it doesn't rattle me. Uh, Dutch Sense shared this on X, formerly known as Tweeter. Uh, another bridge hit over the weekend, this time in Oklahoma, and hit by a large barge going fairly fast. U.S. 59 south of Salisaw, Oklahoma, was shut down for the time being, and the bridge did not collapse, but they said it was struck hard on the support column. So I don't know what's going on. I think that was Saturday afternoon he shared that, if I'm, if I'm correct. So I don't know what happened since then, but there you go. Last 48 hours, earthquakes, 81 over 4.0. 14 over 5.0. So there you go. Let's take a little stroll through Clown World, shall we? Let's do it. Hallucinate. This is from CNET. Hallucinations. Why AI makes stuff up and what's being done about it. Less than two years ago. This is this is kind of funny. This has some humor in it. Less than two years ago, cognitive and computer scientist Douglas Holfzaster demonstrated how easy it was to make AI hallucinate. That's telling lies, but they call it hallucinate. When he asked a nonsensical question and OpenAI's GPT-3 replied, the Golden Gate Bridge was transported for the second time across Egypt in October of 2016. What? <laughs> now, however, GPT-3.5, which powers the free version of ChatGPT, tells you there is no record or historical event indicating that the Golden Gate Bridge, which is located in San Francisco, California, USA, was ever transported across Egypt. So it got a little smarter there. It's a good example of how quickly these AI models evolve. But for all the improvements on this front, you still need to be on guard. You think so? AI chatbots continue to hallucinate, lie, and present material that isn't real, lie, even if the errors are less glaringly obvious and the chat box, uh, the chat bots confidently deliver this information as fact, which has already generated plenty of challenges for tech companies and headlines for media outlets. That's clown world. I just, you know, I can't believe they're just running with this. Can you imagine if we didn't believe Jesus was coming to get us soon? Do you know what our future would be in this world with this stuff? No, thank you. Oh, here's another one from the Wall Street Journal. California's crazy fast food minimum wage takes effect. I think it took effect today. 20 bucks an hour. They, they're making the fast food restaurants pay the employees $20 an hour. But here it says a Burger King franchise will have to pay burger flippers $20 an hour. But the corner diner down the street doesn't have to. That's clown world. Give me a break. California Governor, uh, Governor Newsom hired minimum wage for fast food workers takes effect Monday, today, on top of California's already high $16 minimum wage. The minimum wage for fast food workers will increase to $20 an hour, the highest minimum wage in the United States. They're just trying to destroy fast food restaurants, really. But you know, all it's going to destroy is jobs. That's all it's going to. They're just going to get AI and robots to make the burgers and, you know, it's just that's what's going to happen there. So that's what I got to say about that. <laughs>
All right. How about what time is it? Yeah, we got to get busy here. Let's get to a couple testimonies of the day. And then we'll do a few comments of the day. Okay? Okay. I was what you'd call a good person. I was always low key. I didn't get into any kind of trouble. But even though I was this good person, I was as big a sinner that had ever been. There will be a lot of good people going to hell if they don't come to Jesus. When I was saved, it was quick. The pastor gave the altar call and I just felt the urge to go, but I couldn't turn loose of the pew in front of me. But my mother told me it was okay to go if I wanted to. And over 36 years later, I'm glad I did. Praise God. Praise God. Here's a quick one. Carolyn. I was saved when I was 12 years old. He has guided me through my life for 86 years. I can't wait to go home and meet him face to face. Praise God, Carolyn. That day is coming soon. Mary. This is a comment. A couple of comments today. Mary. Oh, you guys. Our eight-year-old told me this morning what she thought Easter was about. She said, Jesus died for all of us, Mama, and God rose Jesus from the dead on day three. She has a speech impediment, and that was the most detailed I've ever heard her explain anything. I love you all so much. Jesus is Lord. Praise God, Mary. That's beautiful. Praise God. Coffee hubby. We are not told to run to the mountains or hide, but to look up because our redemption draws near. I love that comment. It's perfect. And Jesus said, when these things begin to happen, look up for your redemption draws near. Ben, they are on the verge of World War III. We are on the verge of a wedding. Hallelujah. Boy, is that an encouraging short comment or what? Thank you, Ben. True. Doobie, I am the youngest of seven children and the only girl. I can't count the times my brother saved me from certain death. It was like having six guardian angels with me. Three of them have gone home now. But because of Jesus, I will see them again. All glory to our risen King. Amen, Doobie. Thank you for sharing that. Yes, Saturday, I believe, I told a story about how my biological brother saved my life. So there was a couple of comments about people and their siblings. This is Paula. God is watching us even when we don't realize it. My brother saved me twice, once from drowning. And the other time we were walking through tall grass in a field out in the country near where we lived. Our spaniel dog, Wiggles, was hopping up and over the grass like a bunny, and I was watching him, and my brother yanked me backwards because I almost stepped on a large coiled rattlesnake. My brother was as white as a ghost. He said, we are never going to walk out there ever again. He is two years older than me. I'm almost 70 now, and about 12 when that happened. I look back and see the hand of God on my life. Praise Jesus. Thank you for sharing that. Yeah, that's kind of scary. I, I I don't even like little tiny snakes that are harmless. I'm not a snake guy. Get them away from me. <laughs> I'll just take water, please. This is Synth. Yes, Brother Tom. The Gospel of John is a powerful book in a special way. At age 16, I got saved and began reading it. Today, I'm 75 years old, and God has kept me over the years and proving himself as my keeper in every way, every day over the past 59 years. Praise his holy name. Amen, sister. Yeah, that's what we do. We praise his holy name because there is nothing like Jesus. And yes, look, <laughs> April may be a nothing burger. It may just be a month with an eclipse and weird stuff going on around the eclipse. And it may be a warning that's pushed on a little farther down the road. But I'll tell you one thing. The world is getting darker and darker. And it's time, if you don't know Jesus... Or maybe somebody shared this video with you and you're just not sure where you stand on all this. Time is very short. It's very, Even the world is really starting to see that things are going crazy with the wars and rumors of wars like I've never seen in my lifetime. And I'm 60, almost 61. And everything else, every other sign, the earthquakes ramping up. The, everything is set up for the seven-year tribulation. It's not the time to say, well, I'll find Jesus when I'm old. You know, because we are awaiting the rapture of the church. We think, most of us think it could happen at any time. And the world is getting darker and darker. So your time is short. And all you have to do, it's very easy. 
Getting saved is very easy. Jesus did the hard part. It's just believing what he did. And what he did was he came here in the most beautiful love event that ever happened 2,000 years ago. He came here from heaven and he put on human flesh. He was 100% God. He was 100% man in the same body. And he lived perfectly because he came here to die for our sins. That was the whole reason he came here. He came here to be nailed to that cross. He came here to shed blood because without the shedding of blood, there's no remission of sin. And we happen to be sinners, all of us, all of us. We're all born sinners. But God didn't leave us in that place. He sent his only begotten son to come here to pay for our sins with his blood. And that's exactly what Jesus did because when he walked the earth, he was completely perfect. He never sinned once, not even one time. He never sinned. And when they handed him over to the Roman guards, they brutalized him and then they nailed him to the cross. And he shed blood that once you understand the power of that blood, once you understand that he came here to shed the blood and the blood he shed has the power to forgive every sin that's ever been committed. Once you realize that, that every sin you've ever committed or ever will was placed on Jesus and he came here and died for those sins and paid for them with his blood, all you have to do is believe in the power of that blood. All you have to do is say, Lord Jesus, I'm a sinner. I'm a sinner. And I believe that your blood is so powerful that you shed that it will wash me white as snow and it will take every sin I've ever done or will ever do and remove it as far away from me as the east is from the west. That's how powerful that blood is. And when you believe that and you believe in his finished work that he came here, lived perfectly as the Lamb of God, went to the cross, died, was buried, rose again the third day, once you believe that. You're saved. You're sealed into the day of redemption. You're born again. God will put his Holy Spirit in you. He'll never let you out of the palm of his hand. But that's the biggest decision of your life. And so many people will not take two hours of their life to think about this. It's mind-blowing. It's mind-blowing. They'll spend many hours on many things, hobbies, sports, relationships, many hours, they won't take 10 hours to go, wait a minute. You know, if I got to kind of know if this afterlife is true or not, I got to kind of, if it's true, it's kind of serious because it never ends. Eternity is forever. But all you have to say is, Jesus, I believe in the power of your blood and I believe in your finished work on the cross. And when you do that, you're saved. And if you say, when you hear all this, like, I, I don't, I don't need that. I don't have time for that. Just I just want to raise my family, leave me alone. Then you're rejecting the payment for your sins. You're saying, Jesus, I, I don't believe in you, so I don't believe in your blood and I don't need this payment. But you're going to face Jesus one day on Judgment Day. And you're going to know that moment you're in huge trouble. And you're going to say, I heard the message that my sins were paid for with his blood. And I said, no. And now I sit here before him and my sins are with me. And he'll say, away from me. I never knew you. Can you imagine? Can you imagine hearing that from the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords? How devastating that moment is when you're, when you're wondering what happens now. And you're led off to eternal separation from God, a.k.a. hell. And it's not because God's sending you there. I don't want to believe in a God who will send me... He didn't send you there. He sent his son to die for you. He paid for your sins with his blood, but you're saying, I don't want the payment. So by default, you're choosing it. Nobody's sending you. You're choosing it by not saying, yes, I believe in the payment for my sins. It's important. It's the most important decision you have to make in your life by far. But that's what I got for you today. That's what I got. So I am going to shut the camera off and I'm going to say a prayer for every person who watched this video. And if we're not raptured today, and you know what? Today is a perfectly good day for the rapture. But if we're not, God willing, I will see you guys tomorrow. I love you guys.